properties of rectangles and we have two theorems. This is 6.4a. We have eight previous videos for chapter 6 that are in the geometry playlist if you missed them. So, so far in this chapter we've learned that parallelograms are special quadrilaterals and a second type of special quadrilateral is a rectangle. A rectangle is a quadrilateral with four right angles. So we have two theorems for the properties of rectangles. And the first one says if a quadrilateral is a rectangle, it's a parallelogram. We've got four right angles. ABCD is a parallelogram. We can write in geometric notation rectangle, therefore parallelogram. Our second one says if a parallelogram is a rectangle, then its diagonals are congruent. So here we have a rectangle with some diagonals. So we know AC is congruent to BD. We can write in geometric notation rectangles, therefore diagonals congruent. Okay. And since a rectangle is a parallelogram by theorem 6.4.1, this one, a rectangle inherits all the properties of parallelograms, all those properties we've been learning about in this chapter. Take a look how pretty this is. This is stained glass window. I printed it in black and white so that you could see my red diagonal, okay? An artist connects stained glass pieces with lead strips. In this rectangular window, the strips are cut so FG, that's from here to here, is equal to 24 inches and FH, that's the diagonal, is equal to 34 inches. We need to find JG, so that's from the center here up into this corner. Well, segment EG, that's this diagonal, is congruent to segment FH, this diagonal, because of theorem 6.4.2, that if it's a rectangle, then its diagonals are congruent. That means EG is equal to FH, and that's 34 inches, so EG is 34 inches. That's the definition of congruent segments. And JG, this little piece, is half of EG, which means it's half of 34. This is from our lesson 6.2. It was the fourth theorem that said if it's a parallelogram, then the diagonals bisect each other. So we know that JG, this little piece up here, this segment, is 17 inches. And take a look at this bridge. Look at how the supports are diagonals inside of rectangles. I have a closer view and I've got it marked Q, R, S, and P, and T there, okay? And the braces of the bridge support lie along the diagonals of rectangle PQRS. And RS is equal to 160 feet. That's across the top here. And QS, that's from this corner up to here, this diagonal, is 380 feet. So what's the length of RP? That would be the other diagonal. Well, QS is congruent to RP because if it's a rectangle, then the diagonals are congruent. And that means QS is equal to RP, which means it's equal to 380 feet because that's the definition of congruent segments. And what's the length of TP? That would be from the center down here. Well, PR, this diagonal, is congruent to QS, this diagonal. And we know from our second theorem that if it's a rectangle, then the diagonals are congruent. And that means PR is equal to QS, which means it's equal to 380 feet because that's the definition of congruent segments. So TP would be half of PR. See? And again, that's from our fourth theorem from 6.2 that says if it's a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other. So we've got TP is equal to half of 380, which means it's 190 feet. Okay? So here's that theorem from 6.2.4, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its diagonals bisect each other, okay? Our next lesson is properties of rhombuses, then we're going to do squares, and then we're going to construct a rhombus with a compass, all right? So this wasn't a very long video because I'm breaking 6.4 into four small videos, all right? Have a great day. See you next time. Bye.